limited amount of questions. We'll take two from the room. This is a live event on Al Jazeera. I'm um, Nigerian journalist Kemi Omalulu Olunlayo. The World Health Organization is holding a live press conference in Geneva on the coronavirus outbreak. And most of you know, in 2003, I was the journalist that covered the SARS virus for NBC in Baltimore, Maryland. I've also covered Ebola in Congo in 95, and I also covered Ebola in Nigeria in 2014 for NTA News. Dr. Tedros is about to talk, and I think what's happening, we're live right now on the 30th of January, 2020. The time is about 8.45 Nigerian time. Let's hear what Dr. Tedros has to say. Online. Over the past few weeks, we have witnessed the emergence of a previously unknown pathogen, which has escalated into an unprecedented outbreak and which has been met by an unprecedented response. As I have said repeatedly since my return from Beijing, the Chinese government is to be congratulated for the extraordinary measures it has taken to contain the outbreak, despite the severe social and economic impact those measures are having on the Chinese people. We would have seen many more cases outside China by now, and probably deaths, if it were not for the government's efforts and the progress they have made to protect their own people and the people of the world. The speed with which China detected the outbreak, isolated the virus, sequenced the genome, and shared it with WHO and the world are very impressive and beyond words. So is China's commitment to transparency and to supporting other countries. In many ways, China is actually setting a new standard for outbreak response, and it's not an exaggeration. I also offer my profound respect and thanks to the thousands of brave health professionals and all frontline responders who in the midst of the spring festival are working 24 seven to treat the sick, save lives, and bring this outbreak under control. Thanks to their efforts, the number of cases in the rest of the world so far has remained relatively small. There are, new, there are now 98 cases in 18 countries outside China, including eight cases of human-to-human -human transmission in four countries, Germany, Japan, Vietnam, and the United States of America. So far, we have not seen any deaths outside China, for which we must all be grateful. Although these numbers are still... As you can hear, Dr. Tedros is talking about some of the countries that have cases. United States was mentioned as well as Japan. Japan is hosting the Olympics this summer. I'm sorry about that spelling of coronavirus. That's just a graphic error for the Al Jazeera Graphics Department. They have here Corona virus, it's virus. And so the WHO, Dr. Ted Rose, is talking about 98 new cases outside China, but no deaths. Most of the deaths have been in China. And you can see more of this video on aljazeera.com. I'm Dr. Kemi Amalulu Olunloy. I'm a clinical pharmacist and I covered Ebola in 95 in Congo. 2014 for NTA News as a special medical correspondent in the 2014 Ebola outbreak in Nigeria and across the world. So what we have now, I also cover the SARS epidemic in um, China in 2003 and how it affected some in the United States, the severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS. MERS was also there. I've covered quite a lot because I'm a pharmacist and a journalist at the same time and thus her health reporter. So what we have is the coronavirus, okay? The coronavirus has been there, but 
the stemming of this virus from places in China where they sell illegal animals. And there is one place in Nigeria yet that has been shut down, a Chinese store, a very big one in Abuja, Nigeria. The capital of Nigeria, they sell a lot of meats and a lot of different things coming in from China. The Nigerian Federal Ministry of Health and the feds have sealed that store up because they have, you know, information that could mean um, the SARS, excuse me, their coronavirus may spread. It's the Chinese New Year and many Chinese live in Nigeria. Many of them went to their country for the lunar year, you know, um, celebrations. Many are coming back now and bringing in foods and things that they're going to sell to Nigerians, meats and things. So it's very important that our government curbs this. So you're looking at Dr. Tedros. He's the head of the WHO, the World Health Organization. We well, thank God we have that at the United Nations. And they're declaring the virus as a global health emergency. Two days ago, I saw two Chinese people in Lagos with masks on. I don't know why. Everybody was staring at them. It was in a supermarket. I went to them and I asked them, why they had the masks on and one of them said because they did not want to spread germs i mean she said spread germs meaning that she might be carrying it i mean this stuff is already around you you just have to be very careful what my advice will be as a clinical pharmacist i'm no longer on social media you can't find me with a social media presence i just i'm retired and i'm resting and what you want to do I will just suggest one thing, wash your hands all the time. If you're getting high fevers, if you're getting high fevers, headaches, coughing, check with your doctor to make sure you don't have just a common cold. And like I said, the coronavirus outbreak has killed about 170 people across you know, China, 8,000 are infected. Many countries have started to evacuate their people. Turkey went in there to get their people yesterday and the United States, the Nigerians who were crying for me to tell the federal government to help them. They need to tell the federal government. They're the ones living outside Nigeria. Um, and I don't work with the feds or any of the major news outlets. So I directed them to over there and more than likely when you come back in they'll quarantine you the guy that does that evacuation earpiece see what happened to anima and he's now you know in a case in the u.s there's just so many things that could have worked for our nigerians now in hubei province we have a lot of nigerians in hubei province and hubei is the second after wuhan to have this emergency let's turn back to tedros and hear what he's saying because Beijing has canceled major public events. Even Hong Kong has closed Disney World. Let's see. Clear data, knowledge, and experience with WHO in the world. And seven, the only way we will defeat this outbreak is for all countries to work together in a spirit of solidarity and cooperation. We are all in this together, and we can only stop it together. This is the time for facts not fear this is the time for signs not rumors this is the time for solidarity not stigma i thank you i wonder whether the is going to take any um, questions let's hear from the chair of the emergency committee professor Hussein. thank you very much um, so now was the the time today the emergency committee uh, almost uh, unanimously concluded that it was now time to suggest to the DG of WHO that the novel coronavirus uh, outbreak is a public health emergency of international concern. Considering first the increase in the number of cases in China, second the increase in the number of countries affected with cases, and also that some countries have taken questionable measures concerning travelers. Thanks to the IHR, our main international health treaty, declaring a public health emergency of international concern is likely to facilitate WHO... 
I'm Dr. Kemi Amalulululaya, once again a clinical pharmacist trained in the United States. It's the 30th of January, 2020. You're watching the news conference by the World Health Organization live on Al Jazeera from Geneva. This is Dr. Didi Hussein. Dr. Didi Hussein is basically talking about how, of course, you know, this is now our global emergency and how the Chinese have responded fast. Now, you guys remember that in 2003, when I covered this stuff for NBC News affiliate in Baltimore, Maryland, WBAL, the Chinese were not forthcoming. They waited and hid the SARS virus until it became a major epidemic and it killed one or two people in the United States. It kills quite a lot of people. Okay, the severe acute respiratory syndrome and it originated from over there. This time they did not waste time telling the world and telling organizations like the WHO on what they have here. The World Health Organization director, okay, says there's a no you know, not a vote of no confidence in China. Um, Dr. Tedros did say this is a time of solidarity. It's not a time for stigma. It's not a time for blame, but everybody has to work together. This is an Olympic year and we're, we're getting one case in Japan already. And how safe is the Olympics in Tokyo with this? Okay, there's always, I'm, I'm lost of words, but there's always the conspiracy theory. How did it get to China? Why did it start from China? China and U.S. have trade relations that are bitter. The conspiracy theory, oh, did the CIA put it there? Did they bring Ebola to Africa? We're not in time for conspiracy theories right now. We're here to answer questions and to let you know. I'm retired. I'm following this coverage. I'm not reporting. But this is the room. Maybe they're going to take questions now from the media. Let's hear. I got two questions for Director General. First one, to your knowledge, what are the most extreme, extreme measures that some other countries may execute against China after the release of the decision? And how will WHO respond to it, to these drastic measures? And secondly, uh, as many countries are stepping up to work on the, the vaccine. So uh, what kind of role can WHO play in coordinating international efforts to uh, work and develop the vaccine? And is there a specific timeline for the development of the vaccine? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as I said it earlier, uh, we should have actually expressed our respect and gratitude to China for what it's doing. It has already done incredible things to limit the transmission of the virus to other countries. And where respect is due, then you don't punish. Meaning, if anyone is thinking about taking measures, it's going to be wrong. And WHO doesn't recommend and actually opposes any restrictions for travel and trade or other measures against China. On the vaccine, we have already uh, started and we have inv invited relevant uh, partners and there is uh, progress and we will uh, inform you as soon as we have uh, uh, you know, detailed information. Thank you. And I'll take a second question from the room. Associated Press, please. The AP reporter is going to ask a question. Thank you. Thank you. Right now to the table. Thank you. We're waiting for the AP reporter, Associated Press, United States. Hi, this is Jamie from Associated Press. Um, Dr. Tedros, thank you very much. Um, two quick questions. One is, um, 
I, I'm not quite sure about the travel recommendations. It sounds like you and Dr. Um, Hussain are saying different things. Um, the WHO is not recommending a travel recommendation, but that countries themselves should be allowed to. So how does, how does that all fit together? Because as you know, there are a lot of countries that are already reacting. And then the second question just has to do with your visit to um, Xi Jinping. I, I just want to make sure that we understand when the last time that a DG like you um, flew to a country to meet with a head of state during an evolution outbreak to request um, more de more detailed data and permission. Um, why was that necessary? And if China was responding efficiently and transparency, if uh, China was responding I think they went to China for the transparency. I covered SARS in 2003. Much, they hid everything. Dr. Tedros, and possibly also uh, Professor Hussa, but uh, you want to stress that with Tedros. Yeah, I would be happy to give the travel. Uh, uh, we don't recommend travel uh, or trade restrictions as WHO and what I said and uh, what Professor Usa said are actually the same um, but I would be glad if uh, Dr. Tedros uh, is Usa saying that he does not that. have any reason to restrict international to, travel um, uh, over China, the virus um, I have done it to other countries too before so you know going to the field Visiting countries, you know, having first-hand information is very important. Uh, and that's why uh, I had to visit to see for myself what's happening. And I came back so impressed. I have never seen in my life this kind of mobilization. And maybe you're... This is 2020. Dr. Tedros just told the AP reporter that the reason he went to China to see the head of state was because of this thing evolving, and he has never seen such organization. If you remember when I covered SARS in 2003, the severe acute respiratory syndrome that came out of China, China totally hid the fact that it started in their country, and it went into a bad epidemic. Many people died of SARS in 2003. Now, I'm Dr. Kemi Omolulu, lawyer. I am a clinical pharmacist and a medical reporter. I did that in the United States before I moved to Nigeria, and then I left. However, okay, everything Tedros is saying about no reason to restrict international travel is excellent because there's a panic out there. British Airways has suspended flights to China today. Many U.S. airlines are following suit. Turkish Airlines went there, and a military airplane, too, to take their own citizens out. And so the airline thing is gonna start now because we're inside a plane together, somebody might have the virus, and if they cough, the whole plane gets the virus, that kind of stuff. I know you wanna hear all this, you'll see it on Al Jazeera's channel, but I'm just trying to give you some commentary on what's going on here. And Didi um, Hussein said the same thing, basically, no worry for international air travel. Well, we have one on a ship, a cruise ship, and they've quarantined that passenger. Let's go in and listen on. China was a, a very important one, which is not a new one. Of course, I did it many times to other countries where there was um, outbreaks and, and, and so on. Uh, this one was uh, special because I was able to learn uh, many things from what China is doing. And I'm very confident by what they are doing. And I have seen the capacity, and, and I believe that they will uh, control this uh, outbreak uh, as soon as uh, possible. They have all the capacity that that needs. Uh, but not only what they are doing is protecting their people, but I know from the figures also you know that it's protecting the rest of the world. Outside China, we only have 98 cases. And no deaths. If strong measures were not taken in China, this would not have happened. And that's why I also said we have to appreciate what China is doing. And this declaration is not actually because China is not doing what it, it can. It's actually doing more than China is required to do. This is to protect especially in countries with weaker health system, and to prepare for that. And for your information, 
during my discussion with the president and other officials, they are willing to support countries with weaker health systems, with whatever is possible. Once again, I'm Dr. Kim Yamaluliulula. I'm a pharmacist, clinical pharmacist. I'm retired, and I've covered quite a lot of epidemics, and and around the world. And the World Health Organization bosses, Didain Hussein, who's sitting on the right of Dr. Chedros, the guy with the glasses that you're watching, they are saying that um, there is. Let's hear what Didain Hussein has to say. For example, visa refusal, border closure. A quarantine of travelers who are in uh, good condition. Um, these travel restrictions, under the uh, declaration of a public health emergency of international concern, they will. This declaration will provide to WHO the possibility to question such measures, which already have been taken by some by some countries. Why? did you take this decision? Why, what is the science supporting this decision? Could you reconsider this decision? And uh, we suggested to WHO that uh, WHO should inform the world. There is a conspiracy, and that's what I think personally. I mean, there's always a conspiracy theory. Visa restriction, travel bans, and border closures, like Dr. Didier Hussein is saying here, Okay, the coronavirus has been reported in many countries, South Korea, Japan, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, and the U.S. You can see all the countries. Okay, one, there's an Olympics coming in about five months. Two, it's the Chinese lunar year. How come it coincides with all that time? People are going to China, and then they're coming back with the disease, right, to other countries. So here you go. You can listen to more of it on every channel out there, Al Jazeera, CNN. Everyone will have this. It's a live event a live news conference in Geneva, Switzerland, at the headquarters of the World Health Organization, who is applauding China of moving fast this time as compared to 2003 when we covered the SARS epidemic. I'm Kemi Omolulu, a lawyer. I am retired. You'll only see me here on YouTube showing you things. Have a great one. It's the 30th of January, 2020.